Well, good evening. Um, my name is Dr. Mary Way Bolt. I'm the president of Cecil College. Some of you may not have met me, those students who may be on the call. So I want to say welcome and thank you to the Cecil College community for joining us this evening. The murder of George Floyd was a horrible act of police brutality. His death is one of the countless acts of violence committed against Black people in the United States, a manifestation of the structural and systemic racism that plagues not only our criminal justice system, but also our educational, healthcare, housing, voting, banking, governing structures, to name a few. Um, this discrimination is continued through practices and policies that instilled fear and marginalized and devalued Black people, Indigenous people, and other people of color. Cecil College partners with the Cecil County Sheriff's Office and other local law enforcement agencies to ensure the safety of our college community. Law enforcement agencies in Cecil County have publicly denounced the actions of the officers involved in the murder of Mr. George Floyd and other people of color. And we are committed to working with organizations within the county, including law enforcement, to address racism and hate and to create a plan for inclusivity, safety, and respect for people of color. And some of that courageous conversation started a little earlier today with an event hosted by the Reverend Kevin Brown. You know, Cecil College must, must question our own practices to ensure that we are doing everything to confront the structures that harm and devalue Black lives and the lives of all people of color. And we must do all we can, not only to prioritize equity, diversity inclu and inclusion, but also to directly counter racism in all the forms in which it persists in post-secondary education systems, policies and structures, as well as our own practices. You know, Cecil College is motivated by the promise that post-secondary education has and holds for helping us move forward as a nation and we invite our students, faculty, staff, and community, community partners to teach us, to learn with us, and to stand alongside us in solidarity against racism in all its form. We support a campus and larger community that is inclusive of a diversity of people, thoughts, and practices. Cecil College is really a home to a community of learners who strive to broaden their knowledge of how similarities and differences in the world can advance and not stall humanity. Cecil College continues to assess and develop resources to increase opportunities, reduce barriers for people of color and other minority groups. Seahawk pride is based on mutual respect. And as I've stated before, there is no place for hate on our campuses. And that's what brought us to this evening and for me to reach out and invite um, our Reverend R. Kevin Brown Sr. And I'll provide his bio in just one moment, but also reached out to a student speaker this evening that I will introduce and to one of our uh, staff members who will share words as well. It's my pleasure to introduce Reverend R. Kevin Brown Sr., who graduated from Carver Vocational Technical School in Baltimore, Maryland in 1979. I put that year in because that was in his bio. He continued his pursuit of education by attending Coppin State University, where he graduated with honors and received his Bachelor's of Science degree. Reverend Brown continued his educational quest and matriculated at Wesley Theological Seminary in Washington, DC, and later transferred to Virginia Union School of Theology, where, we, where he received his Master's of Divinity degree. Reverend Brown was ordained interim deacon in 1998, interim elder in 2004. And from 2004 to 2011, Reverend Brown served as pastor of Mount Olive African American Episcopal Church in Salisbury, Maryland. In 2012, Reverend Brown was reassigned to Bethel African American Episcopal Church in Port Deposit, Maryland, where he served for two years. On Wednesday, July 17th in 2013, at the Second Episcopal District Planning Meeting, Reverend Brown was reassigned and appointed as pastor of Wright's African Methodist Episcopal Church in Elkton, Maryland. Reverend Brown is a retired member of the Baltimore City Police Department, where he served for over 22 years in various units, 
such as the narcotics unit, the arson unit, burglary unit, violent crimes task force, special tactical operations patrol, and the regional warrant apprehension task force. He has received numerous commendations from federal, state, and local law enforcement agencies for commitment and courage in the performance of duty. Reverend Brown is always trying to help others. It is not unusual finding him sharing words of care, compassion, and comfort to those in need and giving a helping hand whenever and wherever the spirit of God leads him to do so. Thank you for leading this event with Cecil College this evening. Please help me welcome Reverend Kevin Brown. Thank you so much, Dr. Bolt. Uh, first, uh, first, let me sorry. give honor to my Lord and Savior, uh, because without him, uh, I am nothing. Uh, secondly, let me just uh, thank Dr. Uh, Murray Bolt, who I ad admire and esteem uh, very much. Uh, she's very influential uh, in the community and has uh, greatly uh, impacted uh, my life. Um, if there's anyone that I listen to and uh, want to listen to, uh, it is that of Dr. Bolt. And so I thank you again from the bottom of my heart for trusting me uh, to speak into uh, the ears of your students and uh, to uh, Cecil Seahawks uh, who are listening and a part of uh, this great discussion and conversation. Uh, I also uh, greet you and applaud the work uh, that you uh, continue to do. And so let me just uh, share with you uh, this evening uh, a few uh, uh, thoughts. Uh, if I was preaching, uh, I would uh, title this message, uh, You Were Born to Make the World a Better Place. And to all of the students who are listening to me, repeat this after me. I was born to make the world a better place. 60 years ago, four African-American freshmen who attended North Carolina Agricultural and Technical University discovered that they were born to make the world a better place. These young students, just like you, were trying to be the best students they could be and make their families proud. But their college experience was interrupted by events beyond their control, just like yours. We may have a plan laid out for running our best race, and we may have set goals and dream dreams, but one truth makes itself abundantly and sometimes painfully clear, and that is, Life does not always cooperate with our plans. So sometimes when life gives you lemons, just make lemonade. Racial profiling and segregation diverted these four freshmen's focuses from campus life and COVID-19 and social distancing has shifted your focus. 60 years ago, they watched African Americans being dehumanized by police. And 60 years later, many of you have watched social media videos of African Americans being choked out by police. These freshmen saw peaceful civil rights protesters being tear gassed and attacked by dogs. And unfortunately, on Monday, June 1st, you watched peaceful protesters at the White House being tear gassed by law enforcement. David Richmond, Franklin McCain, Ezel Blair Jr., and Joe McNeil. 60 years ago, found themselves in similar circumstances as you find yourselves in today. They, this evening, 
are a part of our conversation because they did not allow life's interruptions intimidate them from making the world a better place. So quickly, briefly, let me give you the backdrop of how four freshmen turn lemons into lemonade. On February 1st, 1960, at 4.30 p.m., David, Richard, Franklin, and uh, uh, Ezel, uh, these college freshmen walked into the F.W. Woolworth Company in Greensboro, North Carolina, and made small purchases in the desegregated part of the store. Later, they sat down at a lunch counter and asked for cups of coffee. However, they were refused service because the seats they sat in were reserved for whites. They were asked to sit in the Negro section, but they refused to budge. The four freshmen stayed until the store closed that night and then went back to North Carolina A&T University uh, and recruited more students to join them the next morning. So between June 2nd and July 21st, 1960, thousands of college students just like you across the state of North Carolina and other states begun to protest and have sit-ins against stores that had segregated lunch counters. And so on Monday, July 25th, 1960, after nearly losing $200,000, which in today's uh, economy would be about 1.7 million, and uh, uh, a reduction in store sales, the manager, Clarence Harris, asked four Black employees, Geneva Tisdale, Susie Morrison, Anitha Jones, and Charles Best to change out of their work clothes and order a meal at the counter. So they were quietly the first to be served at a Woolsworth lunch counter, and more stores were soon desegregated. So let me leave you with four insights that I received from reading the story of the what we call the Greensboro Four, these four freshmen who took lemons and made lemonade. Point number one, they understood that they were born to make the world a better place. You must understand and know that the purpose and the reason why God created you is to make the world a better place. Everything that you have come through, the hurt, the pain, the good, and the indifference is to be used to make you bitter but to make you better so that you can make the world a better place. Let's look at someone that you're sitting next to and, and look at them and say, I am going to make the world a better place. Point number two, making the world a better place is a choice. Life is about making choices. You either choose to do good or you choose to do bad. We chose to do good. They chose to go to that W.F. Woolworth so that they could make the world a better place for others coming behind them. Point number three, it takes courage to make the world a better place. 
we must stand up for our rights and the rights of others. And it takes a whole lot of carriage. That is why the Greensboro Four, when they left W.F. Woolworths, they went back to their college campus and talked to other students who had the same kind of carriage they had. And they went back to the store the next day and protested against segregated counters. It's going to take courage to change the world and make the world a better place. And I believe that for all those who are listening and seeing me, I believe that you have what it takes to make the world a better place. Finally, your current condition does not have to be your conclusion. Where you are today does, will not determine and does not have to determine where you will be tomorrow. And so let me leave you with this. You were born to make the world a better place. And so Cecil Seahawks, we are counting on you to move the needle so that this world will be a place of equality and justice and inclusion and civility for all. We are counting on you to help us make this world a better place. Thank you. Reverend Brown, thank you for, as always, your inspiring words. Whenever I hear you speak, um, you are certainly someone that we listen to in our community, uh, certainly looks to you for your leadership and your guidance, so thank you. Um, but as we continue our program, I just wanted to remind our audience that this is being recorded and will be posted on the college's YouTube channel. Um, Reverend Brown, I don't know if you wanted to introduce the song, Freedom? Yes, ma'am. Um, <clears throat> there's a song that our Minister of Music at Rights uh, picked and chose uh, for this occasion, and it is Freedom, written by Eddie James. And uh, uh, I believe the lyrics of the song uh, will be uh, for all to see. And I invite you uh, to not only read the lyrics, uh, but feel uh, the, the heartbeat of this song and understand that God made all of us to be free. Let us sing it together.
Reverend Brown, blessings to your ministry of music and the team that sung Freedom. Uh, if you noticed, there was there were the lyrics posted. Uh, yep. If you didn't have a chance to sing along, uh, please, uh, you can download the, the music, the words to the music in the chat. So thank you, Reverend Brown, for sharing the Ministry of Music with, with Cecil College and for sharing that selection. It's my pleasure now to introduce uh, our student, Alexis Wilkes Brown, who will be reciting and re or reading a Maya Angelou uh, selection. Alexis, thank you for sharing a selected piece with us this evening. No problem. Um, I'll be reading Maya Angelou's Still Our Rise. You may write me down in history with your bitter twisted lies. You may trod me in the very dirt, but still like dust, I'll rise. Does my sassiness upset you? Why are you beset with gloom? Cause I walk like I've got oil wells pumping in my living room. Just like moons and like suns with, with the certainty of tides, just like hope springing high, still I'll rise. Did you want to see me broken? Bow head and lowered eyes, shoulders falling down like teardrops, weakened by my soulful cries. Does my heartiness offend you? Don't you take it awful hard? Cause I'll laugh like I've got gold mines digging in my own backyard. You may shoot me with your words. You may cut me with your eyes. You may kill me with your hatefulness, but still like air, I'll rise. Does my, sex, does my sexiness upset you? Does it come as a surprise that I dance like I've got diamonds at the meeting of my thighs? Out of the huts of history, shame, I rise. Up from a past that's rooted in pain, I rise. I'm a black ocean leaping and wide, welling and swelling, I bear in the tide. Leaving behind nights of terror and fear, I rise into a daybreak. That's wondrous clear, I rise. Bringing the gifts that my ancestors gave, I am the dream and the hope of the slave. I rise, I rise, I rise. Alexis, thank you. Thank you for sharing that beautiful piece. At this time, I'd like to introduce someone who probably doesn't need an introduction the amazing Dr. S. Tamika Swan, who currently serves as Cecil College Registrar. Dr. Swan, welcome. Thank you, and good evening to everyone, and thank you all for this wonderful opportunity. Today, I'm going to share my personal reflections. Personal reflections on love, on encouragement, on hope, and on inspiration. You see, part of my personal reflection starts with love. Several years ago, my family moved into a neighborhood. And at that time, we had no idea that we were the only individuals of color. But you see, race didn't matter. My parents always taught us that all lives mattered. So for us, color, you were a human, you were a person. At that particular time, there was an individual, a childhood memory I'll never forget, who did not care for those of color. This individual was not a person of color was not African-American, but that's okay. My father and my mother said, we will still be who we are and we will still every day speak to this individual, even if he doesn't speak because we want to make a difference. And every day when we were in our backyard, we would speak and we would speak. And one day, that one day, this individual turned and not only did my family and his family become friends, but we became best friends. My personal reflections on love. And the famous words of Maya Angelou, if you find it in your heart to care for somebody else, you will have succeeded. My personal reflection on encouragement. You see everyone, I have a son. I have a son of color. I have a son who's in his 20s. I looked at my son, I said, son, how can I support you? How can I help you? What encouraging words do you need from me? My son, look me in the eyes, penetrating, deep, profound. And he said, mom, all I need for you to do is listen. He said, you know what? I'm gonna write you a letter. He sat down, he and his friend, and they wrote a letter. 
my son wrote me a letter that said, you know what? It's all about perspective. We need to teach. We need to listen. We need to help others. We need to understand our perspectives. It's about reconstruction, reconstruction and reconstruction of our thought processes. It's about having an open mind. It's about respecting one another. It's about educating ourselves. We need to unite to get rid of the negativity, to get rid of the ignorance, to get rid of the hatred and overcome all with love. Because you see, love can overcome it all. And we can get through these hardships. Yes, we can together. In the great words of Maya Angelou, my mission in life is not merely to survive, but to thrive. Now my personal reflection, a personal reflection of hope. I saw in the New York Times an article that said there was a significant presence of white demonstrators that were showing up hundreds of thousands, supporting equality, supporting justice for black Americans. I saw on yesterday, my local newspaper, the top headline, we come in peace. And the great words of Dr. Martin Luther King, out of the mountain of despair, there is a stone of hope. Now my personal reflection on inspiration. Everyone, I am proud. I am so proud to be a part of Cecil College. I want to thank the Cecil College leadership for being committed to having a supportive and inclusive college community. I want to thank our president, the Dr. Bought, Dr. Maryway Bought, for the statement on the front page of our website stating that Cecil Pride is based on mutual respect. There is no place for hate on our campus. Everyone, you may remember a song. I remember it very well from 1985. It was produced by Quincy Jones. It was written by Michael Jackson and Lionel Richie called We Are the World. We are the ones who make a brighter day, so let's start giving. There's a choice we're making. We're saving our own lives. It's true, we'll make a better day, you and me. Thank you. Tamika, Dr. Swan. Thank you. Thank you. I should have known not to follow her again. Oh, Dr. Dr. Swan, powerful words, powerful message. And I hope that this um, recording gets viewed over and over again for not only the inspiring words of our reverend, the inspiring words and reading from our student Alexis, but also for your very impactful words, Dr. Swan. And at this time, I really want to thank again all our honored uh, presenters and participants in this evening's uh, Cecil College United Solidarity event. We have members, our, our student population, our trustee members, our foundation members, our multicultural student advisory board members. So I really want to thank you. And um, Dr. Brown, uh, Reverend Brown is going to assist us in closing this event in a very, very meaningful way. So Reverend Brown, if you don't mind taking us into our final portion of this evening. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Bolt. Uh, let me just, uh, before I get in trouble, uh, I need to, to mention uh, Brother David Terry's name, who is a student uh, at your college. He is a fine member of Wright Sammy Church. And so I don't want him to be mad at me. So let me mention uh, his name uh, and uh, the work that he is doing at Cecil College. I think, uh, my brothers and sisters, it is befitting for us uh, as we begin to uh, come down from this mountain, uh, that we remember uh, Mr. George Floyd. Uh, we all know uh, that, and we watch that horrific video uh, where his life was snuffed out in eight minutes and 46 seconds. And so before we have eight minutes and 46 seconds of silence. As the pastor this evening, let me pray a prayer over the student body, Dr. Bolt, uh, and all of the faculty at Cecil College. God, we thank you, God, for 
allowing us to come together, God, and to uh, talk about uh, those things in society, God, that are trying to pit us against each other. I thank you for the leadership, Dr. Bolt's leadership, God, in bringing the college together, God, so that the they could understand and begin to move toward healing. Because Father, we know God that where there is no healing, there can be no hope. We pray a blessing over the campus and over every student and over every parent and all of the faculty, God, that in the days to come, God, that they would work together, that they would reason together, God, that they would understand God, that they have been called to make the world a better place. We thank you now for what you have done and what you are doing and what you shall do in Jesus' name. And we remember all of the families, all of the sons and daughters who have lost their lives in violence. We remember their families now as they grieve. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let us now, in these last few minutes, do some soul searching and think about ways in which we can make the world a better place. It's in you. You don't have to look far. It's inside of you. To make this world a better place and uh, to help the least lost and the left out. It's in you. And so, for the next eight minutes and 46 seconds, as Mr. George Floyd's picture is shown to us, let us be and silent remembrance and reflection.
Thank you and good evening.